What we're going to be talking about today is simple harmonic motion. In order to proceed, what we first need to do is actually define simple harmonic motion. We're going to define this with the following situation. We have a spring over here. You can see on the right, let's call, let's say that this spring has a spring constant K and we have, let's say, a mass M attached below. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to literally just extend that spring. So uh, um, we would bring down the mass M downwards and then it will, we will release it. Now what we're going to see is that this object will be oscillating up and down, up and down constantly. In order for this to qualify as simple harmonic motion, two conditions need to be met. Number one is that the acceleration of this mass m or the acceler acceleration of the object has got to be proportional to the displacement. The first condition clearly applies to this case because the only force acting on our mass m is the elastic force which is given by the expression uh, kx like so. So if the net force is equal to kx, assuming there's no gravity in this case, then the mass times acceleration is equal to kx, which means that the acceleration will be proportional to k over m times x. So in this case, the acceleration is proportional to the, to the displacement. If the displacement rises, then the acceleration will, will rise. And you can, you can think of that intuitively. If you extend the spring, if you release it, an object on the end of the spring or the spring itself as well we experience a far greater acceleration if you barely pull it and barely extend it. Our second condition is that the acceleration is always directed towards the point of equilibrium. In this case the spring will always try to go back to its, uh, to its original shape uh, unless of course permanent form so if we were to sort of pull the spring down then the force acting on it will be acting upwards uh, similarly let's say that we have something like a pendulum and let's say that our balance point is here well then the force acting on the pendulum will be trying to bring it back towards that equilibrium point and if i had a pendulum over here, then the force will again be directed towards the equilibrium point. Mathematically, this is presented by the governing equation of simple harmonic motion, and that is that the acceleration, let's call that A, this is proportional to the displacement, and let's call the displacement X like so, and the constant of proportionality, we're going to call that minus omega squared. So acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement, and it's always directed towards the origin. In this case, omega is actually our angular frequency. So how many radians per second do we actually cover? Now, because omega is actually equal to 2 pi f, we could write this equation in, um, in a few different ways. Uh, we could substitute this directly in, and what we can get is that the acceleration is minus 2 pi f squared times our displacement, which is equal to minus 4 pi squared f squared times x. Additionally, because um, the frequency is 1 over the time period, or f is equal to 1 over t, uh, that would mean that omega is 2 pi over t. Uh, we could, once again, substitute that in there, and a different way of writing this equation will be uh, minus 4 
pi squared divided by the time period squared multiplied by the displacement. Okay, folks, so now let's apply our uh, understanding of simple harmonic motion to a pass paper question. Now, I've chosen a really typical pass paper question, and the idea behind an acceleration against displacement graph kind of comes up again and again in various different pass papers, so it's really useful to keep this one in mind. Okay, so without any further ado, let's read for this question. Uh, in a turbulent air, the wingtip of an aircraft can vibrate. To investigate this effect, uh, you have a graph of the acceleration and the vertical displacement of the uh, wingtip. You have this graph over here. The first question, part I, asks us, explain how this figure suggests that this object undergoes simple harmonic motion. The first thing that we notice that this graph is a straight line through the origin. Now remember, straight line through the origin in mathematical terms means that whatever is on the y-axis is proportional to whatever is on the x-axis. So in this case, the straight line graph means that acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. And we can just uh, write this down. So the graph is a straight line through the origin. The bit which is through the origin is actually often forgotten. So I'm going to underline this. This is absolutely crucial as well. And uh, this means that acceleration is proportional to displacement. So acceleration is proportional to displacement. proportional to the displacement. The second thing that we notice is that this graph has a negative gradient. Now this actually means that acceler the acceleration is directed towards the origin. This is really, really important or towards the equilibrium, let's call it. And uh, we can see how different features of the graph, number one, straight line for the origin. Okay, well, that means that acceleration is proportional to the displacement. And number two, it has a negative gradient, which means that the acceleration is directed towards the equilibrium. I would just like to expand a little bit on that second point that I've written in red. Why does a negative gradient actually means that the acceleration is directed towards the uh, equilibrium? Well, if we notice, um, or if we look at this graph a little bit more carefully, we're going to notice that whenever the acceleration is positive in this region over here, the displacement is negative, and vice versa in this other quadrant over here, when our displacement is positive, so let's say 4, our acceleration is around minus 5 meters per second squared. Well, that means that the when, whenever the acceleration is positive, the displacement is negative and vice versa. In other words, the acceleration and the displacement are in opposite directions. We could illustrate this quite easily with something like, let's say, a pendulum. So if we have a pendulum, and let's say that this pendulum is going up, so let's say that it's going this way, well, the, um, so if the displacement is pointing this way, well, the acceleration will actually be in the opposite way. So it is being accelerated towards the, uh, the other side, and this pendulum will actually be slowing down because of that force. So this force, um, this will be uh, the acceleration, and this over here will, in red will be the displacement. Let's call that D. The next part of our question is asking us to use figure 3.3 to determine the frequency of this vibration. Okay, well, the first thing I'm going to start off with is just writing down the acceleration is that acceleration is equal to minus omega squared, which is my angular frequency, 
multiplied by the displacement x. Now I can see that in this case I have acceleration on the y-axis and I have displacement on the x-axis. So I can just use y equals mx plus c analysis. I can write underneath y is equal to mx plus c. Now we can see, no pun intended, that acceleration is on the y-axis. We can see that the displacement is on the x-axis. We know that our intercept is zero, so I could have just written that as plus zero. That is absolutely fine. What I have left now for my gradient is that my gradient is going to equal minus omega squared. So I can just write down, write that down over here with my um, rainbow pen that my gradient is equal to minus omega squared. And of course this um, also means that our gradient is equal to, so let's write that, quite a fan of this rainbow pen is going to equal to minus 2 pi f and then all of it is squared. Okay now let's apply this to our question. Our gradient is just our change in y divided by our change in x. So let's take a relatively large gradient triangle over here. So let's go from 0 to minus 5. Uh, so that's going to be minus 5 meters per second squared divided by the our displacement, which is our change in x, which goes from 0 to 4 millimeters. I'm going to try and be careful not to forget the power of 10 to the power of minus 3. So this over here is our gradient, minus 5 over 5 to 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. And we can set that equal to minus 2 pi f squared. So I'm just going to square everything. So this is going to be minus 4 pi squared f squared. Perfect. Now all I'm going to do then is just simply rearrange for f squared, which will be minus 5 divided by 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. And I also get a factor of 4 pi squared or minus 4 pi squared. So these two minus signs that are going to emerge here will eventually cancel out. And finally my final step would be just to square root this expression. So I'm going to get rid of this square and I'm going to square root everything. And if I put that into a scientific calculator I'm going to get about 5.6 hertz for the frequency. Okay folks, so hopefully this uh, makes sense. If there are any questions about simple harmonic motion, feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.